Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to create your very own dynamic to-do list. So we're going to create this progress bar that you see here and then we're also going to create this scratching effect that happens whenever you check a box and then we are going to play around with conditional formatting. Whatever date is overdue will highlight in red and then if you have two days left or one day left it's going to highlight in yellow and then I'm also going to show you how to create this drop down using these elements right here and then you're gonna have your counters change accordingly whenever you select an option from the drop down and finally you're also going to learn how to create this calendar effect right here so let's get into it so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a sequence of numbers just so our tasks are numbered and if you're going to be following the video i suggest that you input formulas in the same places that i do just so everything matches up in case you run into any issues you can do it exactly the way i'm doing it and just make sure that you're copying the formulas exactly the way i have mine so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create my sequence of numbers and you could do it this way you could do one two and then you can select both of them and then you can click on this tiny square and drag and then you're going to get a sequence of numbers but you can also use the sequence formula and i'm going to try to use as many formulas as i can just so you can make the most out of this video so i'm going to use the sequence formula and i'm going to do 15 rows one column i'm going to start in number one and i'm going to do increments of one and then i'm going to close parentheses and then I'm going to press enter and then I get my sequence of numbers. So I really like all of my spreadsheets to be centered. So I'm going to select the entire area by clicking on this square right here. And then I'm going to center my text. I'm going to align it vertically in the middle. And then I'm going to wrap my text using this option just to make sure that if my text is very long, it's going to wrap itself instead of getting clipped and instead of overflowing into the other cells. So I'm gonna do wrap. These are my three favorite options whenever I create a spreadsheet. So I'm gonna delete this. I have my sequence of numbers. I'm gonna make that smaller. And then I'm going to add my checkboxes. So I'm going to select these 15 cells. I'm gonna click on insert and then checkbox. And there are my checkboxes. And right out of the box, the checkbox functionality is going to work visually, but it's not really doing anything. It's not tied to any functionality. So then I'm going to make that smaller and then I'm going to start adding some headers. So I'm going to add this number symbol and then this is going to be done. And then my task and then my due date is going to go here. I'm going to do status and then maybe days left. And then I'm going to bold this. And I'm also going to bold my numbers. So now my due date, I would love it if it was a calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these cells. I'm going to click on data, data validation. And then from this list of options, I'm going to select date. Then I'm going to leave this as it is, is valid date. I'm going to reject input just so if you try to input anything that's not a date, it's going to throw a warning. And then it's going to show a validation help text. I check this box and then the warning is going to say whatever you type in here. So it's going to say enter a valid date and then I save. So now when I double click on any of these cells, if I can select any due date from the calendar and it's immediately going to be shown in this column. Now, I don't like the way this looks, so I'm going to change the formatting and I'm going to select all of my 15 rows again and then I'm going to do format number and I'm going to go all the way down to custom date and time and then I'm going to find one that I like so maybe I like this format Tuesday August 5 and then the year so I'm going to select that and then maybe I like that one but not exactly the way it is so there are many options here that you can select so I can do right now it's the day as full name Tuesday but it could be the day as abbreviation so I can select this option and then maybe I also want to make the month shorter as an abbreviation. So I'm going to select that and then my day and my year. And then I'm going to click apply. And now this is the way my dates are looking. My status, I would love it if I could select from the drop down several status options. So I could do in progress, pending, then maybe pause, needs approval. And you can make this list as long as you want. And then 
I'm going to leave these options here, but you could also do it in another sheet and maybe hide it, but I'm going to leave this here. And now you can do this list as long as you want. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it to a drop down functionality in this cell. So I'm going to select this very first status cell and I'm going to click on data, data validation again. And then I'm going to leave this list from range option selected. And I'm going to click on this tiny table right here that says select data range. So I'm going to click there. And then this allows me to select range. So I'm going to select my status options, which is my range from I8 to I11, I8, I11. Then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to reject the input in case whatever option is entered in that cell is not one of my valid elements. So I'm going to reject the input and then you can change your validation text. I selected this checkbox to make sure a validation text appears in case something is wrong. And then you can change that text. So then I'm click on save and now I have a drop down that is tied to these elements. Now, since I only selected these four cells when I was selecting my range, if I add anything here, something else, that's not going to show up. So you need to make sure that when you are selecting your range, I'm going to do it again now on this cell, when you're selecting your range, if you plan on adding more afterwards, then select a longer range. So if I click OK, now my range goes from I8 to I23. And then I'm going to do the reject input and show validation text again. And now in this one, I get this option. While on the first one, I won't get that option. So just make sure that you consider that when you are creating your drop downs. And then I'm going to select this very first one. I'm going to copy and then I'm going to select every other cell in that column that's inside my to do list table. And then I'm going to paste. So now I replace the previous functionality. And if I add something else, it's not going to show up because I replaced the drop down that was there and that was working differently. So now that I have my options, I'm going to select a few. I'm going to calculate the number of days left. So the way you do that is I'm going to do equals the due date minus, and then you're going to do today and open and close parenthesis. And then if you press enter, today is October 11. So I have two days left for this task. And then if I click here and I drag, the formula updates and now I have nine days for this task. I have seven days for this task. And then if I add something in the past, then I get a minus something. So this task is overdue. And then as you can see, I have these numbers right here and that aren't very pleasing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a condition. So what I want is if I have a date here, then I want you to calculate my days left. But if this is blank, then I want you to do nothing. So we're going to come back here. I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to do equals if. And now, as you can see, you have your logical expression first. And then if the value is true, you have to do this. And if the value is false, you have to do this. So my logical expression will be if my due date is blank. And the way I'm going to do that is if is blank. This cell, the cell of the due date, then I want you to do nothing. So I'm going to leave it empty. So my value, if true, is nothing. It's, it's empty right there. And then if it's not blank, then I want you to do something. And what I want you to do is I want you to tell me my number of days left. So I'm going to do my due date minus today, open and close parentheses. And then I close parentheses one last time. So to recap, I have if my due date is blank, show nothing, empty space between those commas. And then if not, execute this formula, which is my due date minus today. I'm going to press enter and nothing changes because there is a date here. But once I click and drag that tiny square, everything gets updated here. So whenever I actually add a date, then that number is going to be calculated. So I'm going to leave that there for a second. You can pause and you can copy that formula. And then I would love to know how many of my tasks are in progress, how many are pending, how many are paused. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add a formula here. I'm going to do equals and then I'm going to do count if my range of status are equal to 
this cell and then I'm going to close parentheses. So right now I have two that are in progress. If I add another one, then I have three. So that's updating. Now something's missing here that's very important. This range right here, if I copy and paste this formula and paste it down below, the range changed because I didn't fix it. So this formula is taking into consideration this range, but then the formula down below is actually shifting one cell below and it's not taking into consideration this first cell and that's not what we want. So I'm going to delete the second one. I'm going to go back to the first one. And what you have to do is you have to fix this range. And the way you do that is by setting your cursor somewhere within these characters that are representing this range. So I'm going to just place my cursor somewhere over here and then I'm going to press on my keyboard F4. So you could add it manually, but it's faster to just press F4 in your keyboard and then your range is going to be fixed. So now I'm going to copy and paste it down below and then my range was fixed. It's no longer shifting one cell below. So I'm going to paste again and then I'm going to paste again and my range is perfectly fixed, but my criterion, which is this cell, is actually shifting one cell below. So that's just perfect. And then I'm going to maybe select one is pending and then one is paused and my counters are updating properly. So now I also want to know my total number of tasks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two cells and I'm going to merge them using this button. And then I'm going to write down the label total. And then I'm going to select these other two cells right next to them. I'm going to merge them and this is where my total is going to appear. Now, right now I don't have any tasks written down, so I'm going to write some. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do equals and then I'm going to do the count A formula. So I'm going to do count A, open parenthesis, and then I'm going to select my range of tasks and then I'm going to close parenthesis. So right now this is counting all of my non-empty cells, which are three. So now whenever I add a task, my total is going to update. This counter is going to update. Now onto the best part, the scratching functionality. So what we're looking for is that whenever you check this box, you get some sort of scratch thing going on. You want this row to look different than the row that has a non-checked box. So what we're going to do is we're going to use conditional formatting. So we're going to select this section all the way from the very first task to this very last cell in the last row. And then we're going to click on format, conditional formatting. Then we're going to select from this drop down. We're going to scroll all the way down until you find this custom formula is option. And then you're going to do equals dollar sign and then C9. So what's happening here is I have to fix this to column C, which holds the check boxes, because if I don't do that, then you're going to get a mess. But if you fix them to column C, then every single one of these cells is going to evaluate this function and it's going to reference column C. And as you can see, the row isn't fixed. If I fix it, then we're also going to get a mess. So what's happening here is each one of these rows will adapt to what I did here. And the way I do that is by making this column fixed because I always want column C to be referenced, but by making row nine flexible. So each row is going to use its own checkbox. And then I'm going to give it some formatting. So I'm going to maybe make the background this light gray, and then I'm going to make the font a bit lighter. I'm going to scratch the text, and then I'm going to also use this italic formatting option and then I'm going to click on done. So you can do whatever you want. You can do any color you choose. It's entirely up to you. The formatting is entirely up to you. And if you want to go back and edit that formatting, what you do is you can select any of these cells that has already that formatting applied to it. And then you are going to click on format, conditional formatting, and then you click on this rule and then you can keep on changing your formatting. You could make it look as if that disappeared, but it's actually really there. It's just the font and the background are the same color. Now, I also want to keep track of how many tasks are done and how many tasks are pending. So I'm going to select these two cells. I'm going to merge them. I'm going to do the same with these other two. And then I'm going to select both of these cells that are already merged. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to skip one cell and then I'm going to paste. So that way now these cells are merged in this exact same formatting. So here I'm going to have my pending counter and then I'm going to have my completed. 
counter. So now very important, I only want these counters to take into consideration rows that have actual tasks written on them. For example, if I check this box, I don't want that to be considered as a completed task. The same way it's not being considered in the total. I only have four tasks. So these should not count as a completed task. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do equals count ifs with an S in the end. Then I'm going to open parentheses and my first criteria is going to be, my first criteria range is going to be this range. And then my criterion is going to be if that range is true. So a checked box is true and an unchecked box is false. And then I'm going to do my second condition. So my second condition, I'm going to do a comma. I'm going to close this so you can better see the formula. So I'm going to do a comma. And then my second condition is going to be, I want this range to actually have a value in it. And the way I'm going to say that is I'm going to open quotations and then I'm going to do these angle brackets the more than and less than symbol, and then I'm going to close quotations, and then I'm going to close parentheses. So what I'm saying here is I want this range in column C to be true, and then this range in column D to not be empty. And if both of those conditions are true, then I want my counter to increment. So if I press enter, I'm going to get the number two, which is these two tasks. And as you can see, if I check this, it's not going to do anything because this condition is not being met. There is not a task in here. So if I check this box, I still have the number two, but if I add an actual task, now the counter increases because both conditions are being met. And the next thing I want is I want to know how many of my tasks are pending, which is pretty simple. You just do equals and then you do the total minus the completed tasks and you get your number of pending tasks, your number of completed tasks, your total tasks. And then all of these, let's add a label so you can remember what this is. These are my status labels. So let's play around a bit more with conditional formatting. So what I would like to do is if any of these are overdue, I want to highlight them in red. And then maybe if any of these are maybe between one and two days left, so they're getting close, I want to highlight this in yellow. So let's start here. I'm going to select all of these cells and then I'm going to click on format, conditional formatting, and then I'm going to click here on add another rule. So once I do that, I'm going to select from this drop down the option that says date is before. And then it immediately sets this as today. So if the date is before today, then you highlight it in red. So that was pretty simple. And then I'm going to close this and then I'm going to do something similar here. So I'm going to select all of these cells and right here I have numbers. I don't have actual dates. So I'm going to select all of these cells. I'm going to click on format, conditional formatting. I'm going to add another rule. And then in here, I'm going to use the is between option. So if it is between one and two, then I want it to be highlighted in maybe not so bright yellow in yellow. So there's plenty of options that you can play around with. If you wanted to do something in the drop down section, you can do the exact same thing. You select all of your cells and then you can do maybe text is exactly in progress. And then whenever the text matches this text, it's going to highlight in what, whatever color you want. Then you click on done and then you have all of these conditional formatting being applied to your table. And as you can see, this scratching effect takes precedence over everything else that I added. So if I select all of these and then I click on format, conditional formatting, you will see the very first rule is the one that is handling the scratching effect. So if I move that all the way down, then the other ones are going to take precedence. So if I check everything and then I select this, and if I move this rule, if I want this rule to take precedence and be executed first, then you can just click on these buttons right here. You see how I hover over and then the cursor changes. If you click there, then you can move it around. So if I add this, condition and I bring it all the way to the top, it's going to take precedence over the rest. And this is what you're going to end up seeing. Even though these conditions are also being met, this is the most important one. Now let's maybe add a title. And then finally, I'm guessing you're going to want to have a progress bar of some sort. So I'm going to select these four cells. I'm going to merge them and I'm going to set my percentage here. So to do that, I'm going to do equals my number of completed tasks divided by my number of total tasks. And then I'm going to 
format that as a percentage and I have 100%. Now, if I delete everything, this is going to look like this, which is not very pleasing to look at. So what we're going to do, and this is caused by uh, division by zero. So what we're going to do is we are going to add the if error function. So I'm going to wrap this in parentheses and then I'm going to do if error, the if error formula. So if error, and then my division is going to be wrapped in a parenthesis and right before the closing of the parenthesis, I'm going to add a comma. And then I'm going to leave this blank. So in this space, you're supposed to add whatever should happen if this throws an error. So if this is okay, then this is the value that is going to be used. But if this throws an error, then this value after the comma is what is going to be used. And I don't want anything in there if there is an error. So that's why I just leave the comma and then I leave an empty space in between the comma and the closing of the parentheses. And then I press enter and then there's nothing here. So I'm going to bring back my tasks. So now that we have the percentage, we're only missing the progress bar. So I'm going to select all of these cells. I'm going to merge them and then I'm going to use the sparkline formula. So if you've already seen my habit tracker video tutorial, you're familiar with this formula. If not, this formula is the one that allows you to create a progress bar inside of a cell. So you have to be very careful with every single one of the characters that I am adding, because if you mess one up, if you mistake maybe a semicolon for a comma, then everything gets messed up and you won't know what happens. So you have to be very careful with this. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to reference this cell, the percentage, and then you're going to do a comma, and then you're going to open a bracket and you're going to do open quotation, chart type, close quotation. And then you're going to do a comma, open quotation, bar, close quotation. So that's my first option. My chart type is a bar. And then you're going to do a semicolon and you're going to set the maximum value. So the maximum value, you're going to open quotations, max, close quotations. Then you're going to do a comma. And then my maximum value is 100%. And then finally, you do a semicolon, open quotations. You do color one, very important to add the number one, close quotations, you do a comma. And then we're going to do the bar color. So right now let's do it green and then we can change that later to something prettier. But let's do green, close quotations. And then since you open this bracket, you also have to close it. So I'm going to close it and then you open parentheses. So you have to close it as well. You close the parentheses and then you have this progress bar. So as soon as I start updating my checkboxes and I start updating my progress, this starts moving. So that's it for the actual functionality. So now we can start decorating it and making it prettier. So first I'm going to get rid of everything else, everything else, every cell that I'm not using, I don't want it there. So I'm going to select this column and then I'm going to press shift. I'm going to scroll all the way over to the very last column. I'm going to press shift and then I'm going to select this very last column. So that is a quick way to select multiple columns at once. And then I'm going to right click and delete. And then I'm going to do the same for the rows. I'm going to select this one. And then what you can do is you can press shift, control, and then down arrow. And then I'm going to right click and delete rows. So now all I have is my to-do list. So I messed this up and I actually want it to be a little bit at the top, just so there's some space in between the title and the progress bar. Now I don't like the way these grid lines look. So very quickly, I'm going to start by delimiting my table. So I'm going to use this fourth gray color for a border. So this fourth gray color, I'm going to select that and then outer borders. And it's very subtle right now. You're not seeing it because I have all of those grid lines in here, but it painted this outer border a different color. I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to select it and then I'm going to paint my outer border that same color. And then I'm going to do the same here the same here and the same here. And right now you can't tell, but you will be able to tell in a second. And then I'm going to do the same here. And now I'm going to do view show, and then I'm going to unselect this grid lines option. And that gets rid of all of my grid lines. And you can see how different this looks without all of those lines all over the place. Now we are missing some lines here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my entire table. I'm going to click on the borders option and then I'm going to change my color to this second gray color. And then I'm going to do inner borders. 
And now we have this very subtle grid line that is that looks way prettier than before. So let's do the same with this status table. And then maybe let's do the same with this ones. So now let's have our title look a bit prettier. So maybe it looks better if it's aligned to the left. And then we can make the font size a bit bigger. And then you can choose a different font. So let's do maybe pop-ins. I like that one. We can do pop-ins. And then you could also bold this and make it bigger. And then you can edit how wide your columns are by just clicking here and dragging. That controls how wide your columns are. And then I would love it if I could make it look like the background is actually gray instead of white. So I'm going to select multiple cells at once. I'm on a Mac, so I just, whenever I select a different range of cells, I press the command key and then I just click and drag my range and that guarantees that whatever I selected before is still going to be there. We're in a window, so I'm not sure how you do that, but I did this by pressing on the command key in my keyboard to be able to select multiple cells at once that are not necessarily close to each other. So I'm going to do this second gray color. Then maybe I want to highlight the headers a bit more so I could do this maybe fifth gray and then I can do that fifth gray again here. And then we could make this be green. And then this could be yellow. And then this could be maybe blue. And then I'm gonna bold this. Um, I actually don't like the way these decimals are showing. So I'm going to use this decrease decimal places option. And I'm going to click on that two times and that's making my decimals disappear. It's rounding it. And then I don't like this green color. I actually want it to be different, maybe closer to this color. So what I'm going to do is, since this is a formula, I need to add the proper color here. And so every color has what is called a hex value that represents that color. So I'm going to try and find this hex value. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select this cell that already has this green background that I like. I'm going to click on fill color. And then I'm going to come down here into this custom section and I'm going to click on this plus symbol. And then I'm going to copy this hex value and I'm going to click on cancel. So nothing really happened. I just copied my hex value and I'm going to use that value and I'm going to replace it here instead of the green text that I had. So now my bar became that green color. And then maybe I don't really like that one either. So I'm going to select any other cell that's not being occupied by anything. I'm going to set the shade of green that I like. And then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to press on this plus sign again. I'm going to copy the hex value. I'm going to click on cancel. Then I'm going to paste my new hex value. And I kind of like that better. And then I'm going to have this go back to the gray that it was. So this is just a very fast decoration, but you can make this way prettier as pretty as you want it to be so that's it for this video i hope you like it please let me know how i did let me know if something wasn't clear enough for you if you wanted to learn something else the file is going to be available in the description down below in case you miss something run into any issues you can always just come in here look at the formulas and then remember that in order to be able to find what I did regarding conditional formatting, you have to select these cells and then you click on format, conditional formatting, and all of the rules that I used are going to pop up. So you, all you have to do is select them and then you can look at the formula right here in case you need it for some reason. Same goes for this. You can see what I did and then apply it to your own file in case you run into any issues. So let me know how I did and thank you for watching.